So we're going to start our second half with Daniel Badu, who is uh, a Watford under 23s academy analyst, and he will be presenting on analysis and information overload. Daniel, over to you. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me right there? Right. I'm Daniel. Um, I oversee the analysis from under nines to under twenty threes at Watford Football Club. So I'm basically going to talk to you about the usage of analysis and overload. So at Watford, well, in most clubs, we use many different uses of of software. We've got sports code, which you use to clipping and coding games, we were in stat for data for matches or for each individual player and team. We also have Huddle, which is a video sharing tool, which we use to, for the players to access to see their games and the clips of from each game they, they have. And also we use Wisecout as an education tool for getting professional clips to share with the players. To, show them how professional teams are doing in s certain aspects of the game. For example, how um, Dan from Fulham showed Oxford Chamberlain doing the forward runs and how um, Spurs were playing the 4 3 3. So, debriefing in football in, in a nutshell, to be most effective, it has to be done the best time and place. So coaches tend to say straight after the game, we will um, have analysis feedback of the game just played to reflect on the team's performance. So the targets, if each player has their own individual targets, they have team targets, they have match day targets, they have seasonal targets, and they have um, GPS data targets if they're hitting the high speed, how many high speed runs a game, and also if they're covering a certain amount of distance per game. In the feedback, you have to be open, ex open to exchanging. So the players will have a say, the coaches will have a say, and they will come to a conclusion for their technical, tactical, physical elements of the game if they are improving as a player, if they're failing, or if their um, areas need to improve. This is all done through the goals are set as well as continuously monitored six weeks, four weeks, every week, all the time, you could say. They do say they have it like um, monthly, weekly targets, but it's, to be fair, it's every day. But there is a big but with overload with, uh, of information to the players. I personally believe um, the time and all the data we're giving to the players, is it relevant? Is it, are they all necessary for their, for their development? And do they all take it in? Because some players do not have the mental capacity to absorb what you're telling them. With some players, you could just give them one or two things and that could mean the world to them and they could go out and be a better player. Some players, you, they'll take in, take in, take in, and they go onto the pitch and they freeze, they overthink, and their performances. Also, with the players, are they, are, are, with all the information they're taking, are they actually understanding their strengths and weaknesses? Are they actually understanding what they've got, what they've got to do? And are they able to reflect on what they're actually doing? Because all the information they're taking in, they're processing, but they can't, all can't process, as I just briefly just said. Once again, is the data relevant to the thing? So for the players, I think, for the information needed and the feedback, you should make it more re relevant for them instead of giving all the information needed. The length of the feedback should be short and sweet and not too long because more and more they take in, they're gonna get bored and they cause a mental fatigue, which is gonna hinder their performance. And once again, I did not all the athletes have the capabilities to process information given. Just keep it short and sweet, and they'll be able to take it on and understand. That's just my personal belief on the information, and a lot of coaches giving too much information and overloading and hindering players' performances over time. Thank you.
thank you, Daniel. Um, that first slide just shows you how much resource is now put into performance analysis and the, the choice that players and um, coaching and, and, and analysis staff have in terms of how they access information. Um, I thought it's a really interesting point you also made, Daniel, around how do we measure the impact and learning that's taking place um, through the data that we, we give our players. And I think that will be a, an ongoing question that we will continue to have to answer as, as professionals.